Good morning, folks. The sun is keeping me on my toes right now. Despite the lack of major eruptive activity, the sun has my analysis flip-flopping every few hours now. Thus far, there has been a calm that persisted until this morning when a tiny snap released much more ejecta than I'd have anticipated. This is not Earth-directed. Let's come to solar flares, low as expected based on yesterday's sunspots, but today that big boy up north has regained major mixing potential where the negative umbra invades the positive trailing stronghold, while that tussle between twin spots of opposite polarity remains at their 7 o'clock position. I'm ready to call Delta class at a moment's notice. The other spots behind that and to the south are either small, not mixing well, or lacking the opposite polarity spots nearby. There may be some potential for the incomers down south. The next three days will tell us for sure. Also keeping me on my toes is the solar wind. It's not the coronal hole stream as we hypothesized yesterday. We still expect that, but this is a moderately speedier set of dense waves that are corkscrewing to present different phi angles to Earth's magnetic field. This is currently causing significant but small-scale disruptions to our field with stronger-than-normal magnetic pulsations. On the larger scale, we have entered instability and will watch for storm activity today. You can see that the positive coronal hole up north is incoming. The only visible portion in 211 angstroms is the southern end that dips below the solar equator. By tomorrow, we should have entered its IMF influence. Let's do our top stories. First, out of Princeton, excellent study on underwater waves with an animation to boot, where the heat and nutrients are flowing under the glassy surface. Bit of beauty as NASA's Earth Observatory looks in on Kattegat in the former home of King Ragnar. The somber update as well on the Nepal death toll, link for you below. Folks, I need to put the channel on baby watch. My wife is about to prove why she's tougher than me, so despite not missing a day here since 2011, I will almost certainly be missing a day here soon when my daughter is born. Also, folks, a bit of catch up. There are only 20 days left in pre-registration for Observing the Frontier 2015. Our first conference event is this October in Pittsburgh, and it's going to be a lot of fun. If you are watching on YouTube, it is the first link found below this video, and if you're over at suspiciousobservers.org, it is the button up on the top right side. While I'm over here, let's see if we can all get on the same page. Most of you know the news is posted here daily. Below that is the description of those major changes coming to the site June 1st, then our summary videos about Earth's magnetic reversal, the first quarter of 2015 update, our middle-of-the-road fact-based climate video, and the Sun series where you can become a skilled sun watcher in less than an hour. Philippines saying goodbye to a typhoon heading up now to Japan while the next one begins trekking westward faster. Then we have Anna on the U.S. East Coast very much weakened and is now mostly a rain event. But the same can't be said for the rest of the United States. That low is sliding east slowly and as it does so brings the convergence line with it where air of vastly differing pressure, moisture, electric potential, and temperature slam into one another and force equilibrium that releases energy that we really feel below. This climate extremes event also dumped two feet of snow as winter storm Venus on the western side of the low. Pressure overlay shows the high still clearing Australia, while the lows bunch up to the southeast. Those will deliver the top watches to the southern coastlines here. Over in Europe, that low and convergence line couldn't be more easily noticeable. You will quickly spot how it contains the cloud lines, but it looks like tonight's storms won't be quite as severe. Scroll, click, get your fingers a workout, why don't you? Still about 200 support emails behind, guys, but we're catching up quick. I've got your current conditions and shots of our start to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 5.55 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.